Well, hello, Nick the Vic here, M0NTV, and welcome to my ham shack. Um, now, of course, you can't actually see the radio because uh, the radio is sat there, and uh, at least one of them. Uh, and over here is my kind of um, shack bench where I'm building my next radio, which you can't see either, but never mind about that. We'll get to that in another video. Uh, which brings me to the point. Uh, I put something on the reflector the other day about doing some virtual club talks while we're all locked down and not able to get to the club uh, and had some positive feedback on that so I thought I'd kick it off with with one today and um, I've gone with what I know because I've got a YouTube channel so I thought I'd record it and do it but if anybody's got any comments or questions whatever then just leave them in the uh, the comments bit below or contact me through the reflector that's absolutely fine um, but I thought I'd start with something a bit different because uh, we'll get to building radios and, and, and all that uh, and another one um, because that's a bit more niche, and not, not everybody's necessarily into, into doing that. Um, but I thought, well, let's start with something that pretty much every ham can identify with. And that is something that most hams, I would imagine, will at least have a go at at some stage, um, and probably several times, which is building antennas. And really, antennas are my first love. That's how I kind of got into ham radio, really. And so... Uh, I thought what I'd do, it's a beautiful day outside and we're all locked down here, so I thought, well, let's go in the garden. So I'm, sh I'm going to show you around uh, my uh, antenna garden. It's not really a farm um, and it's a very small garden, but <laughs> hey, um, so I'll see you out in the garden. Well, hello, welcome to the garden. Actually, it's a bit cold, but it looks like to put a top on it. Um, but right, okay, so uh, let's show you um, what we've got then. Right, if we start with HF, work our way up. I'm going to put this up here now. You can probably, hopefully, just about see this line, which goes up here, up here, and down here. Now, this is my inverted L. You might get a better look of it. Um, in the middle, in the middle, in a minute. If I put it around there, you'll probably see it goes over to there, goes over up to here, feeds down here, down here, down here, down here, and down here. Now, it's everything that you shouldn't do <laughs> when you're building um, an inverted L um, because uh, it's. I built it when I was a shortwave listener and uh, just kind of adapted it when I started transmitting. Um, but it, you're not supposed to have it, you're supposed to feed it that end and uh, have a, a remote tuner on that end and then uh, send the coax back around to here. Um, but of course I didn't do that. Um, so uh, it is noisy because it, it's picking up uh, the uh, central heating boiler is just um, um, uh, the other side uh, of there so it picks up every time the boiler fires up and the rest of it. Um, and it goes into this little package here it's all waterproof and taped up and full of cobwebs by the looks of it is a little nine to one unun um, so that just um, gives about a well uh, 450 ohms to, to 50 ohms um, but I mean the impedance is never exactly that of course um, and the whole antenna um, is almost I mean, it was it was more by luck than judgment, really. Um, but uh, it's actually about 20 meters, so the thing functions almost as a kind of end-fed half-wave vertical, not quite, on uh, on 40, and so it works on 20 and 15 very well, um, and then not so well on the others. But it, it will work on the others, but uh, not as effectively. Um, and so you can see all my. Uh, connections going into the house there um, so really I've got to move it now because it's it's far too close to the oper operating that's the back of my computer um, so uh, you can't put any real power through it because it's far too close and uh, so I need to uh, to build something different which hopefully I'll get a chance to do in these next few weeks um, so that's um, that's that but it works very well uh, and it goes into a tuner in the shack and uh, and yeah, I mean, surprisingly works well. The, the grounding is very, very inefficient. There's just a little 
um, bit of grounding that goes around here to an earth rod there and there's one that goes to another earth rod around there so it's it's hopelessly inefficient um, doesn't matter so much on uh, on 40, 20 and 15 where the, uh, there's not a lot of ground currents but on the, the others on 80 and, and the rest then uh, it's not so good right okay so this is the uh, this is where it joins so very wonky looking standoff here all very Heath Robinson this because this is kind of where I started while we're down the uh, end of the garden let me show you my other HF antenna which is in my apple tree now this is a bit stealthy you can see it a bit better now because obviously we've got no leaves on the trees but so this here is a quarter wave vertical um, inductively loaded I'm not sure if you can see the induction coil it's, it's kind of there's a branch just kind of going underneath it really um, it's a seven meter uh, pole um, and really it should be 10 meters um, but it's another 10 meter one so that's why it's inductively loaded um, the temptation is to put the loading coil down the bottom but it's much better in terms of getting your signal out higher uh, to, to get that coil up as high as you well not as high as you can but i suppose it's what two thirds three quarters of the way up the pole um so that comes down to here now this was very experimental um because it, it's it's coming around there's lots of radials but the radials i don't know where you can actually see it's this this very thin soda beans brown wire the radials are wrapped most of them some of them are, are aerial you'll see there um there's about I can't remember now. There's about 16, between 16 and 20 radials. Uh, they're tuned radials, so most of the, these are, are, sh are too short. These are only about an eighth wave. Uh, but the ones over um, in the more uh, westerly direction are uh, a quarter wave. Uh, and because that's what I wanted it for, I wanted it really for, for getting across the pond to, to the United States and to South America. Um, and it works quite well with that really so I mean I've wrapped these these radials around the branches I don't know if you can, can see this um, uh, and it does appear to work uh, amazingly I'm not sure if there's a, a squirrel sat in the uh, the uh, the tree when I was transmitting it might get a bit of a, ju <laughs> a jump <laughs> with 100 watts through the apple tree um, but, uh, but it does seem to work quite well. Um, uh, this is just um, uh, a little common mode choke. There's a thundering big um, ferrite in there. I think it's probably about a 240, 43 or something. Um, just to try and kill any common mode currents. But there really aren't any common mode currents because this is a resonant antenna. So it, it tunes very, very well to, to 40 meters. Um, and so that you know there isn't really any any reflected uh, current because it's resonant it will also tune uh, on one of the harmonics to to six meters and I have used it on six meters but not as effectively um, so and so it's quite a reasonably long coaxial running the coax kind of comes down here and then it kind of heads all the way around the garden and, and back up to the house um, but yeah but works um, works well and if I hear an American accent um, when I'm tuning around on the uh, on the inverted L and I switch to this antenna I can usually get one or two S points higher on receive right let's move on to VHF and UHF okay so now if I swing this up here hopefully ignore the one on the left at the minute um, now on the right see swinging around there this is probably the most successful antenna that I've ever built really this is a, uh, a quarter wave ground plane um, for two meters um, it has very low center of gravity it's built on uh, a chassis mount SO239 socket you know the ones with the four little screw holes which you attach the radials to and then the the bit where you'd solder on the inside of the socket is where you put the uh, the uh, vertical radiating element in and then your uh, coax screws into the the coax connector and you run that down the the mast 
and uh, it's superb. You can adjust the SWR by angling the, uh, the radials to get a good 50 ohms match. And uh, so mine, uh, although it's cut for two meters, it's, it's my general purpose VHF, UHF receiving antenna. And I mean, that'll do everything from, you know, the International Space Station to boats on, uh, in Pool Harbor and, and everything else in between. But superb thing, that's the third one I've built. The others have suffered from poor weatherproofing, which I've got a bit better at over the years. It, it could do with guying, they could all do with guying, to be honest, but they waft around in the wind. Um, and in uh, the, the storms we had recently, although, you know, I had slates come off the roof, I had fence panels blown down, <laughs> all the antennas were fine. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? So, uh, so that's superb, that's the one I use when we have the Thursday net. Um, and works very, very well indeed. Um, now, I'm just going to swing around now so you can see my latest creation. Oh, hang on, we're going to be in the sun here. Hopefully I can just put it up here. Okay, yeah, now, there we are. So this is my 6-metre Delta Loop antenna. This is very recent because I only uh, built this last week, I think, and, uh, and tested it just yesterday with some uh, Fras members who kindly popped up um, to uh, to help me kind of test it, so um, it's fed. If I can get around behind, you might be able to see. Yeah, okay. So it's fed at the bottom, which means it has a uh, horizontal polarization, and you can see there that coil. Um, that is actually a quarter wave of 75 ohm coax and uh, it, it's used as, uh, uh, as a uh, kind of, uh, uh, well, as a transformer. Um, so um, uh, it's, it's a quarter wave of 75 coax, a 75 ohm coax, uh, because the feed point impedance is, is 100 ohms, and that will give you uh, near enough 50 ohms. Uh, it's coiled up like that as well because it also serves um, as a common mode choke, so it, it has a dual purpose, and then the coax uh, is connected uh, to to that and runs down. Um, and yeah, we tested it yesterday, and and did very well. It's very directional, as you can see. Um, so at the moment, it's oriented, uh, pointed to the north. Um, but uh, it's uh, yeah. So when the magic band opens, that should be uh, should be good. Right, okay, so I'm just going to move around here now and show you the last one, which is this one here. Now, this is my four element Yagi, which is built for 70s. And funnily enough, this was up, it was up where the Delta Loop was for ages, and I only took it down a few days ago to, to put the Delta Loop up. And then um, we uh, we tried 70s for for a, a net the other night, so I, I put it back up again. Um, and weirdly, for a Yagi, um, it actually has a 50 point uh, 50 ohms uh, impedance. Um, it's just the way it's designed. It's very short, and it's to do with the the spacing of the elements and the rest of it. And it doesn't have a great deal of gain, um, just a few dB. Uh, but uh, I built it to get into the Isle of Wight repeater actually. Um, but it, it does the trick. So anyway, there you have it. That, uh, that is my little antenna garden. And uh, yeah, I hope you found that um, interesting. Well, there you go. Um, I hope, uh, as I said, that you, you found uh, that interesting. And I hope as well that it's perhaps inspired one or two people to, uh, to think, well, maybe I could do that, you know, so, you know show us around your shack or show us your antennas or, or whatever you know um uh, just uh, be a bit interesting to 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 see something different really i suppose um now i will do another one uh i will do uh, one on what i was supposed to be talking about which is about home brewing uh radios um uh, transceivers particularly um, and I'll get around to that um, uh, as and when. <laughs> so I will do normal. But but please, if anybody else wants to do something, uh, that would be absolutely uh, fantastic. But uh, until then, stay safe, look after yourselves, and uh, hope to uh, catch you on the air soon. 73s, Nick the Vic, M0NTV.